Okay, let's solve these two simultaneous equations. First thing we're going to do is rearrange equation A. Okay, the reason we're going to do that is that we've got just the y on its own here, and you've got x squared and x. It'd be much easier to make y a subject and then replace the y with all the x's from equation A. So if we rearrange equation A, we get y equal to 5 minus 2x. And then we substitute into b. So we're going to take this bit here and substitute it in for the y here. And we get 2x squared minus 3x e minus, let's put brackets around all this to make sure we don't make any mistakes with the signs, always do that, big hint, so the yellow bit always goes in brackets, e equals 16, and then you're less likely to make sign errors. Now let's just get rid of the brackets, so we've got 2x squared, now we've got a minus 5, we've got minus minus 2x, now minus minus 2x will give us plus 2x, add that onto the 3x, gives us minus x. And we've got minus 5, and we've got equals 16. Now, remember to solve quadratics, get all the numbers onto the same side. So get the 16 onto the same side. And we get minus 21. And this factorizes. Okay, um, if you can't see how to factorize it straight off, use the quadratic formula. But I'm going to factorize it because I can see it straight off. Um, but you shouldn't waste more than 10, 15 seconds looking for the factors yourself. Okay, and I can see that 7 and 3 will work because 3 times 2 gives me 6 and 7 and 1 will give me 7 and then they differ by 1 to give me this x here. So I'm going to put the 7 to combine with the 1x and the 3 to combine with the 2x. Now I need this to be negative because I want the 7x to be bigger than the 6x because I want to get minus x. And that's how I get that. Now, either this must equal 0, or this must equal 0. So let's just do that. So you get 2x minus 7 must equal 0, or x plus 3. Sorry, x plus 3 must equal 0. So 2x equals 7, so that gives us x is 7 over 2. And this will give us x is minus 3. Now, put that back into the equation up here. All right, we got y equals 5 minus 2x, so we can find y when x is 7 over 2. 2 times 7 over 2 will just give us 7, so 5 minus 7 will give us minus 2. And when x is minus 3, put minus 3 into here, minus 2 times minus 3 is 6. 6 added onto 5 gives us 11 for our y value. And that's our answer to part a. Now part B, we want to solve this inequality here. So for part B, let's look at this inequality. 2x squared, it says hence or otherwise. Well, I'm going to use a bit of hence on this, but first of all, we've got to be able to see what's going on. Now all of these, just as usual, get everything onto the same side and see what you've got. So we take the, add 2x to both sides, we'll get minus 3x plus 2x gives me minus x and I got to take away 5 from both sides so minus 16 minus 5 gives me minus 21 and obviously if I take off 5 I get nothing there and take that off I'm left with naught there and you will notice that this is exactly the same expression so my critical values so my critical values are going to be x is equal to minus 7 over 2 and minus 3. If I was to draw the graph of y equals this expression here, the bit I'm just underlining, if I have y equals that, then I get this sort of graph. I'm going to have it crossing at minus 3 and at uh, 7 over 2, so it's just over 3. So I'm going to have it crossing at minus 3 and crossing at 7 over 2. And the graph will do this. All right. And we want to see when it's greater than naught. Well, when the y value of all of this, when all of this is greater than naught, the y value of this will be greater than naught. So it's going to be on this section and this section. So we can see that 
will need to be to that side of 7 over 2 and that side of minus 3. So therefore, x is less than minus 3 or x is bigger than 7 over 2. So x is less, this is the x is less than minus 3 business going on here. And this is the x is bigger than 7 over 2 going on here. And that is our final answer here. Okay, so that's our final answer to B.